it kind of got kind of scary for you mm-hmm. a, little, a little second uh, with the cancer scare. Yeah. You know, so uh, let's touch on that, man. Let's touch I on found that. Now, I'm, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I found thought I had cancer um, on Thanksgiving in 2018. Oh, my Lord. Um. Best of the Best Entertainment presents your feature presentation. Yeah. You're rocking with Sir Quentin Best. Check it out now. Of the Best Entertainment. Shh. Shut up and hustle. Yo, what's going down? It's your boy Sir Quinn from Best of the Best TV, where we keep our eyes and our ears open for local, global, up and coming, and established artists. Today, we got a multiple business owner, big wig, entrepreneur, Miss Big Cheese, survivor, Miss Anika Jordan. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey, you got a, we, we, we linked up before. Yeah, you got a story. You got a story. So we're going to pick your brain a little bit and figure out like your, your whole little story. So you from Milwaukee, correct? Yes. So what it was like growing up in Milwaukee for you? Um... Growing up in Milwaukee, I kind of seen a lot of stuff um, growing up, um, as far as like drug dealing, um, all around me, um, plenty of fights and just a lot of negative stuff, um, having kids early, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, what, what street you was, what street you grew? You gotta ask. You in Milwaukee? You gotta <laughs> ask. You gotta ask what street you grew up. Bro. Okay, so I was born on Cherry Street, and I was raised on Brown Street. Oh man, what's what zip so, code is that? What zip code? Five three two zero five. Oh yeah, that's almost over there by 06. So yeah, you said you was in the hood. So like you said, so piggybacking off the story that you know me and you was talking about like you you know what i'm saying you was a felon like you let's let's get into that so like how did you uh you became a felon and then you got it off your record so let's mm-hmm. talk about like the whole thing okay so um around 17 18 you know i had kids early um job wasn't really doing it i was working going to school had two kids at 17 so i picked up a, a pack um she and up the pack <laughs> yeah facts. i picked up that's that drug dealer talk <laughs> in case y'all don't know that's that drug pack is drug dealer talk that's a, a pack it's a, a zip you hear stuff like that it's a, it's a, it's, yeah yes. picked up the pack all right yeah. keep talking <laughs> so i did that um and like i said it was all around me um so that's all i knew um so i sold drugs and stuff like that um I didn't actually get caught. Somebody else got caught, told on me. Wow. Um, so I end up doing four months um, in CCC, well, house correction. They gave me CCC time. So I was still working, um, enrolled in college. Um, so I was still doing that, but still doing my thing on the side. While you was um, locked up or this was, what? yeah. let me touch the hand of a guy <laughs> this, what? Right. Yeah. Um, so then I just like, I just seen a lot of people like going to jail and dying and stuff like that. So I want to do like a little turnaround. Copy um, that. Yeah. So I just stopped doing that and just thought about like, is this where I want to be at? Um, this is not what I want to do like through my life. So I knew I was going to be something when I was a when I was a kid. Um, so but what, kids what made early, you? What, no, I'm sorry, I cut you ahead. off. Uh, so what made you stop selling drugs and uh, like you know start because you got plenty businesses out here <laughs> I, you told me, we was talking man she literally forgot she was like wait did I forget a business like you, you got plenty yeah. business <laughs> plenty business so what what like what was the the eye opener for you to just be like okay I ain't want to go to jail you ain't want to go to jail no more no nah. yeah they kind of gave me like um I ain't gonna say no stop no risk because I still was a felon but they gave me four months uh to do in jail two years papers but then I was young. I was 18. I was 17 when I caught the case. I was 18 when they sent to the course. They waited till I turned grown for they could sentence me. Um, so I was kind of confused, like drugs. Like that's all I know. Yeah. Fact. So like when I even when they sentenced me, I'm looking at my attorney like, well, you sell drugs? <laughs> like what's the like? like <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that's so, walking for you. Yeah, because right my attorney was my grandma, my best friend. So I'm looking like, so you represent me. And you sell it too. Oh, so I'm like, okay, well, cool. No way. Yeah. So, so can I ask you, you had kids at the time you got locked up? I had two up? kids. Yeah. Wow. So what was that like? That was. Um, 
then I they didn't, I thought I, well, I told them I was at camp, so they never knew like where I was at. Mm -hmm. Um, so like emotionally I, for you, like yeah, was it was I, I was young, so I was like okay, like back then, like I went to jail, I'm a drug dealer, like it was just something not happy to say, but yeah, then I wasn't. I was yeah, you like, okay. really messed up about it. Yeah, yeah I wasn't messed up about even. it. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so I wasn't wow. messed up about like my kids was in good hands. Um, I was going to college, so they was letting me out every day. Then I go to work too, so I was really not in CCC like that, just to go sleep. Right. right. So I was I was pretty cool. Then I quit my job just so I could be outside on Brown and CCC thinking I'm at work. <laughs> So I was just doing that. Wow. <laughs> you was outside. You was outside. So what was yeah. what was the um first business that you started? Like the first business was my home daycare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was working for like daycares all my life, um, group homes, CNA, caregiving and stuff like that. So I knew my passion was to take care of people, whether it was kids or adults. Right. So I was working as a director at a daycare and I'm seeing all this money coming. I'm like, nah. I got to get up out of here. I got to have my own. But Thanks. me growing up, they like, well, a fella can't be this. A fella can't do that. A fella can't do this. I'm like, they was hard okay. on us back then. Yeah, like, wow, yeah. 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 So I was just like, okay, well, I'm finna prove everybody wrong. So Correct. I put the two week notice in in my daycare that I was working at. Um, and I just left and I opened up my own daycare. You talking about me talking that entrepreneur talk now, right? In case y'all just now tapping in, we with Miss Shanika Jordan. Man, like big wig. I'm talking about multiple businesses, man, and giving back to the community, man. So y'all stay tapped in. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Yeah. For fresh haircuts, fades, and shapes with a smile, contact Donnie D Styles. Located inside Salon Solo at 6329 West Greenfield Avenue in beautiful West Allis, Wisconsin. Book your haircut experience on the Cut app today or call 414-687-3940. Remember, for fresh haircuts, fades, and shaves with a smile, contact Donnie D Styles. See you soon. This is Wine Crystal here with Best of the Best TV, where we interview entrepreneurs who've shown consistent dedication to their work. We assist others in marketing by exposing you on all successful platforms and your favorite podcast apps, as well as a special segment titled Artist of the Month, where we honor artists' achievements. Contact our host, Sir Quentin Gladney, by visiting bestofthebesttv.com or email 414liftoff at gmail.com today. Yeah, we did kind of smooth over, um, you know, you getting a, a felon expunged off your record and all that. So let's let's touch back on that because there's a lot of people out there that don't know about that. So like, yeah. So um, I heard about the pardon and the expungement. I tried to do the expungement. Um, I paid two different lawyers, two different prices. They went into the court. Um, they denied me both times, of course. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna try to do the pardon. So I did the pardon, um, went all the way to the governor uh, board, whatever, did the interview with them, sitting in front of 30 people, uh, plus the governor. Um, I told them everything that I accomplished, um, me graduating from college and stuff like that. Um, they denied me, of course. They said that my fellow wasn't hearing nothing because I was doing basically what I what I wanted to do. Right. So I said, okay, well, next time I'm apply, I'm gonna tell them that. If you don't mind me asking, what was, uh, remember what you, where you was at? Well, what what made you say like I don't want this on my record anymore? What what was the okay? I I'm, I just don't want to be labeled a felon. Um. Well, actually, like I don't know. I just was like I want to I want to carry a gun uh, the right way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stay yeah that, that's that's a big reason the right there. <laughs> that's a big reason, especially how you out here ride. Right? But yeah. that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, continue where you say you say uh, uh, they, they turned you. They turned yes, you. They, they turned denied you. Down. Yeah. So then I said, okay, well I'm gonna come back a different way. Um, and remind you, I did the application myself. I didn't pay a lawyer. I didn't do none of that. Wow. Um. So. This application myself. This time I came where I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, I feed the homeless, which I do feed the homeless. I do book bag giveaway, which I do that. Um, I was told I want to go back to school to be a nurse. Didn't want to do that, but I was just trying to tell them that. Yeah, give them stories. You know, get them some sad yeah. story. Like I can't just I can't do this. So I did it with that. So then they, um, of course they picked my application. Um, I did an interview again with like 15, 20 people. 
um, told them everything that I that I did uh, do for the community, stuff like that. So that's basically what they want to see, like you doing, you giving back, like right. doing for the city. Mm -hmm. Um, so they end up approving me. Right. Wow. You did it all yourself. All myself. Wow. Yeah. And I actually help others too. I was gonna say that. I was gonna yeah. get into that. Like, yeah. yeah, you actually help help others. So if some uh, for the felons that's out there, um, give them your contact information where they'd be able to find you. Um, you can follow. Well, follow me on Facebook, Shanika Jordan. Um, or any of my business pages, I got everything is listed on there. Um, my Instagram is Big Boss Sneak. Yeah, it's your big boss, like big boss, <laughs> not little boss, big boss. <laughs> all right, so uh, you you said you said uh, mentioned uh, all the stuff that you do for the community. Mm -hmm. um, you do have an annual event. That yeah, you, so uh, I do have one coming up now. It's August twentieth. It will be at Carver Park from noon to four. Um, well, we last year I gave about five hundred book bags. Um, this year I'm trying to do at geez. least fifteen hundred book bags. Um, we do. I blow up my bounce houses, free haircuts. I need uh, one of those. Little, I need one of those little Gucci book bags. You yeah, got, yeah, you got, you got, <laughs> you got, nah, I was, I was just, nah. But yeah, can tell you, like, she, yeah, she. How, how many years have you been uh, running this for? Um, this be my seventh year. Seventh year, yeah. yeah so I started the uh, back of school giveaway when I first opened up my first daycare. Um, so I had my daycare for seven years, my first one. Um, I did the back of school giveaways that year. So. Right. I know you got the bounce houses out there. Oh, too. yes, yes. Yeah, Best in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, man. You hear me? So talk about the bounce houses, too. That's another one of your businesses. Yeah, too. so I do the bounce houses. Um, I do characters, adult games, um, big movie screens in the backyard, um, concession machines, everything, so... See, it's hard, yeah. man, for, like, you, you know, a lot of people want to keep, keep their money to themselves. Like, what what pushed you or derived you to make you want to like give back to the community give back to the kids like what um i'm a given person honestly um whether it's my family like my family come to me friends come to me stuff like that and then basically because like i'm blessed like blessed blessed so you got to give back absolutely um and especially me doing like a lot of people grow up with their parents helping them with a the business right. or their boyfriend they one man or you know stuff like that helping them nobody helped me right i started on just saying like i'm finna do this and never look back that's what's up let so me touch I, your hand I up and goddess in here right there because that right there whoa yeah. whoa, whoa so i whoa. gotta i gotta give that's that's just in me right so, so let's touch on the other businesses too because you do like uh what is it Notar um, notarized i do I, yeah i notarize notarized. You to get notarized your car gets told <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Jeez yeah. man, y'all get in tune, y'all get in tune, man. So if y'all been watching the show, we got our new segment. It's called the word segment, where you spin the wheel and you you, you tell me what you think about these words. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, buddy. All right. So we got a couple of words on there. Don't be cheating. Ooh. Don't be cheating. Okay. Ain't okay. no, ain't no, ain't no sticky word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we're gonna give, give you uh, two spins. If we, if we like what you got going on, we're gonna okay. get a third spin. So art, it, art is the word. What's your take on art? Art. Art. I don't know. Um, I ain't really into art. Yeah. I need another spin. <laughs> <laughs> Get another spin. I need the one that's like hustling. Yeah, I was gonna say that's on there. Ooh, -wee, relationships. Oh Jesus. Um, so I got to talk about relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, you ain't really got to talk, talk on it. Just what's your take on it? Like how you feel about it? It could um, be family relationships, intimate relationships, whatever. I'm gonna say family relationships. Right. Um, I don't really like. Now I don't have like really like family relationships with my family. Mm -hmm. Um right now due to me being who I am now, um and what I can't do or can't be around. Right. So a lot of people will say, Oh, she thinks she all that. She don't do this no more or she went Hollywood and stuff like that, which I just can't do the stuff I used to do. So right. I wouldn't be where I'm at now if I did the stuff I used to do. Right. I can't sell no block waking up being outside all day i can't do that yeah so if i if you see me glazing through the hood then they like oh she come down here to shit on us or you know what i'm saying oh, something yeah, like that like yeah, no yeah. i just like this is my hood i should yeah. never come out here and feel safe I like, like to have nice through. things yeah, yeah i like to have nice things so it's that type of thing so i kind of lost a lot of family members um around that's kind of so. messed up like like 
Why is that though? Like, we gonna talk about that. Get your other spear, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Get your other spear. Can't do that with you. You need another spin. Say studio. I don't know if you rap. No, I don't rap. I should start. Another spin. <laughs> uh, relationships again. Oh, man. All right. Would you rather pick one, money or happiness? Which one out? Happiness. Happiness. Yeah. Elaborate. I'll pick happiness because I want to be happy in life. Like, money don't make you happy. Um, like I still, I, I got money. Well, I, no, wait, let me take this back. I don't got no money. Message. <laughs> wait, Can't say LTV with your yeah. family watching. <laughs> I don't got no Cause money. Cause you said, you said, <laughs> we, no, it's right here. Hold on, rewind it. Rewind right, it. Right. No, no, let me correct that. But you know, I don't, I don't, I, I do what I do. Yeah. Fast. And I drink myself, but that still don't make you happy. Like. Mm. Money don't resolve everything, right? So I'd rather me be happy, right? That's that boss talk, man. Yeah, that's that boss talk. <laughs> All right, give me one more spin up out you. Give one more. Jeez, it's, it's targeting you, love. Love? Yeah. I love heart. Yeah. I love heart. Relationships, friendship, stuff like that. But when you get on that bad side, it's like, yeah, yeah. For somebody to get on that bad side, which you gotta love them anyway. Yeah. So that's 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 a good one. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the word segment, man. Brought to you by my girl DJ. Shout out DJ, man. In case y'all just now tapping in, we with Shanika Jordan, and she is an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, and uh, just just going crazy. But uh, you know, you had your day, you had your 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 down, you had your ups. Let's talk about. Uh, it kind of got kind of scary for you mm -hmm. for a little second. Um, with the cancer scare, yeah, you know. So um, let's touch on that, man. Let's touch. I on found that. out. Now, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I found out I had cancer um, on Thanksgiving in 2018. Oh my Lord. Um, so when I found out, I went in because my side was hurting. Um, oh my I used to have that pain like when I was younger, so I didn't really think nothing of it. But this time, it kind of like stood there, it stayed there, like just just hit me. So I said, okay. I called my family like, well, I'm gonna be late to the Thanksgiving dinner. I'm finna go see what's going on. I'll be back. Mm. Didn't go back. Didn't make it back, should I say. Um, mm. I went to the hospital. They did my blood work. They said it could be a cancer or a blood clot. Right then I knew, I, I, I knew it was cancer. Right then and there. Um, what? Yeah, I, I, just, I just felt it. So I'm like, oh, I got cancer. I'm like, okay. So they came in. They um, White gowns came in. And the white gowns is who be upstairs when you get admitted to the hospital. Wait, so how do, wait hold on. Yeah. How do you just say, like, I got cancer? Like, yeah, it just, like, when they get, when doctors give you, like, when they say, okay, it could be this or it could be that, you're going to always think the worst. Wow. Because they know it's the worst, but they just they don't know for sure, but they can't just come in here and say, Ooh. you got this. Right. So I'm like, I got it. Um, but then I was thinking like how like I don't smoke raised up I'm thinking like secondhand smoke you get cancer stuff like that mm -hmm. no you can get it any type of way shape or form mm -hmm. um, so they, they admitted me they said we gotta keep you you cannot go home so I kind of like panicked then got the call and everybody I'm like oh I'm gonna die that's the first thing that came to my head so they admitted me in the hospital they had to watch me when I say they had me on all type of machines keep coming there waking me up all through the night so then I'm like yeah this is serious like they trying to make sure I ain't dead in here Yeah. so they did an emergency biopsy then they sent me home but they was calling me every 15 20 minutes different doctors different doctors like he's checking on you so I'm like okay test came back the next day um I was doing I was at the daycare and they told me to sit down they was like okay well you got cancer so it really didn't shock me then because they basically already told me when I was in the hospital two days before so it didn't shock me. I'm just like, what's the next step? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm like, well, I can come in today. Um, the fact in. that you stayed strong, they came and got you from work, but continue. Yeah. Like, you were still working. Yeah, I wow. still work. Close the daycare down, stuff like that when it's Whew. time to close. Jeez. Yeah. So then I went. You um, one of those. Yeah, like. <laughs> you ain't know, one of those. Like, yeah, when it ain't my time, it ain't my time. Jeez. Like, God got me here for a reason and want yes. my time to go. Yes. I'm, still, I'm still here for a purpose. Yes. So let me touch the hands of a goddess again because <laughs> I need that. Yeah. Wow. So I just knew in my heart, like, I ain't going nowhere. I just got to do this, what this doctor tell me to do. Like, mm. I just got to do my steps. Yes. 
um i'm like he is making me stronger to see if i can really go through this like so i'm like okay so we went in the doctor put a big old screen up um told me what kind of cancer i had told me it was sitting it was actually started from the middle of my chest but when they caught it it was going up my neck oh um so it was like no lung cancer it was no yeah. breast cancer where I can feel a knot and say, oh, I got to get this checked yeah, out. Yeah. I would have never knew if I would never went in for some pain. It even had nothing to do with the cancer. Yeah, I was going to say, why did it affect your side? It didn't have nothing to do with it. That one number God saying, let me oh, get some here before I can go in. Oh, man. Because yeah, that didn't even have nothing to do with what was going on. What? Yeah. yeah. So actually, when I got to the hospital, I'm like, my side hurting. When I got to the hospital, checked in, it stopped hurting. So they like, okay, we can't check nothing. I'm here. I'm already here. I know what I was feeling. Can y'all just check my urine? Can y'all just check my blood? Something going on. Because yeah, I had absolutely. the pain. Yeah. I'm like, why am I leaving? And that number guy said, stay there. Yeah. So I stayed there and they did my blood work. And that's when they found out. Wow. So uh continue with the process. So like what was it like with the stay like the stay? You said they held you in. Yeah, so I um when I went in for my appointment for them to see like what type of uh, uh like what stage it was and how fast it was growing and stuff like that. Um they said I had it for years how long it was. I mean how big it was. Right. Um so I went to Freighters, got a second opinion. They told me the same thing. I'm like, okay, y'all got this. So I'm like, okay, Whoa. they telling me I got it, but I never told no I never told nobody. Like, I got cancer. I wasn't doing that like yeah. the doctor the doctor said i got it i'm not owning up to something that's, that i don't know well, the yeah. doctor said i got cancer that's that's, that's what they that's said it, yeah that's it like i wasn't going to say oh i got no i ain't never owned it none of that so they asked me when did i want to start i'm like i need to start this now yeah. like i don't want to wait um i want to bring in the new years knowing that i'm gonna be here absolutely the next year absolutely so <clears throat> they um kept me in the hospital i was in the hospital I was going in the hospital on Mondays at seven in the morning and they keep me in there to Friday, seven o'clock at night. Non-stop chemo, non-stop chemo. Normal people, they get chemo and they go home Yeah. and they just be sick, weak, whatever at home. Mm -hmm. Mines, they had to hit me aggressive. So where I was getting non-stop chemo for a whole week, non-stop. So, um, and then I get out the hospital for two weeks and then I go back for a week, stand, <clears throat> excuse me, stand there for a week, get back out. And I was doing that for four months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And what was you doing when you, when you went home? Was it like, was you, cause you had your businesses. You was Yeah, I was still, businesses. my daycare and stuff was still running. So I have prepared to where my daughter, um, running while I'm gone for the week. Um, I was still at the hospital doing paperwork, attendance sheets, meal sheets. <laughs> I was doing everything in the hospital. In the hospital. In the hospital. In the hospital. Oh yes. man, you was not claiming hospital. it. What? And I and I felt like I got up every morning, like I was really going somewhere in the hospital, get dressed, and I'm sitting there. I don't, I took their clothes off, everything. So what? I got my normal clothes on, did my daily walks. Um, little nurses and CNAs coming there. I'll be selling them hair, lashes, all that that I have in the cabinet. Hold the on, we didn't even talk about it. you sell <laughs> hair and lashes too? Yes. We didn't even talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what don't you do? <laughs> but yep. continue, but continue. Like that, yep. wow. So I was selling hair, everything to the people, the nurses up in there. Wow, everything. Man, you just like, a good soul. Yeah. You just a good spirit, yeah. man. Ran a daycare while man, I was in the hospital. Wow, wow. In case y'all just now tapping in, I, I just almost teared up. We chilling with Shanika Jordan. Man, y'all stay tuned, man. We got one more commercial break. We got to pay these bills. Y'all stay tapped in. Yeah. It's that time again. The sunny season has arrived. With all the celebrations to come, fixing our crowns also means beating the heat. Are you a part of the men, women, and children in the Milwaukee area who are seeking a professional hairstylist, loctician, or braider? I'm now accepting new clients. Fine Wine Braids has relocated to the south side of Milwaukee. However, I'm still providing mobile services to punctual clients at an additional cost. Don't miss out on the great deals for your favorite hairstyles such as $100 box braids and feed-ins for the month of April, the service two children get half off the price of one, style promotion, as well as the very popular $20 off referral bonus. You can find me online on Facebook or Instagram at Find is Wine Crystal, and you can even look at some of my latest styles and prices on the Booksy app at twistedbyice88.booksy.com. Again, Thanks for your interest in fine wine braids. 
I look forward to booking your Yo, list. yo, man. We at Best of the Best TV. We kicking it with Shanika Jordan. And uh, yeah, so we we left off with, you know, you was in the hospital. Uh, you was going through chemo and uh, so yeah, like let's 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 kick it back off, like like how the stay was at the hospital yeah. and all that. So how my stay was, um, like the nurses, the little white nurses, they come in, they were like, "Are you okay? Can we do this? Can you go for a walk?" I'm like, "I did my walk, I did everything. Like there's yeah. nothing for you to come in here for." So they should think like, tell the black girls to come in there like. We don't think she like white people and woo woo. No, I just don't. I don't <laughs> need y'all services. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm straight. Just give me chemo when this bag run out. Just yeah. put the other bag on here. I don't need nothing else. Yeah. I didn't order food from there. None of that. I had Red Lobster, Door Dashing. I was going there to the doors, gonna Door Dash, Red Lobster, Speed Queen, BW Threes. They probably was pissed. They like was. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> the nurses are still in the hallway. They come in like. Shanika and they didn't call me Irma which is my first name yeah. I don't go by that name my yeah. doctors even was calling me Shanika what they was coming like Shanika what do you got now we spent it all in the hallway <laughs> crab legs <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm a, I'm a normal human I was like I, I don't I was, I was making it like I stayed there like I was just like my wigs heads in there Whoa. I got clothes you made this home I made you was home. at the crib I made a home my laptop daycare stuff i had papers around like i had an office on the side in my room with all my daycare papers meal sheets attendance sheets route sheets everything so i made i made it like it was home i didn't take it because it's a mind thing when you're going through a situation like that if you take it in like oh i got cancer then here come the oh i'm weak and i feel this and i can't eat and stuff like that and then now you losing 100 pounds now you did yeah that it, it's just a mind thing so yeah. I kept on telling the nurse, like, weigh me, weigh me, because I know I'm finna eat this. Yeah. And then my taste buds actually went away. So I didn't, I couldn't taste nothing. Oh, you couldn't so, taste no crab legs, no speed nothing. queen. No, oh, but Lord. I know, but in my mind, in like your I, mind, said, like, I, I, I remember I how this, this shit tastes. I eat this. <laughs> yeah, I eat this. So I, I said it was eating. Right. That's yeah, we were just talking people, about yeah. on break. Like, like, I just almost teared up. And it was like, not be, like, not because of what you went through, it was the strength, because like, it took a lot of strength. And, like you were saying, like on break, like I, I'm not gonna say your words, like what the doctors had you doing, and like go ahead and touch on yeah, that. Yeah, so they used to come in there like, I don't know how you doing it. You getting five different chemos nonstop. I'm literally walking around the hospital with a chemo bag right here. The thing stuck in my chest, walking around with a bag the whole seven days I'm in the hospital. So, five days I'm in the hospital. Um, so they used to come in there like, I don't know how you doing it. They was telling me like this medicine gonna make me weak. I can't eat stuff like that. That's one. That's why they want to keep me in the hospital to monitor me. It was none of that. I was getting up, doing my walks before they come in there. Physical therapy, like, what do we need you for? Like, they're like, well, can you do me? Can y'all um, do me something? I'm like, yeah. So I go in there. I'm like, can you go in the other rooms and just talk to them and just let them know, like, you know, they'll be okay. Try to get them strength and stuff like that. So I used to go in people's rooms like. Get up! It's the energy, right? Yeah, there. like, like, what? no, you want to sit there and lay there and die? Cause that's that's what you're doing. You got to get up and walk. So I even was getting people out their rooms, like, come take this walk with me. So we'll walk around stuff. Oh Jesus! Um, yeah. So oh, we'll here, walk let around. Let it out. Let it out. <laughs> let it out. Cause I almost let a couple out. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, what is the strength? Like, yeah. you just passing on strength, and that's. Whew, yeah, it's, it's a hard I got such a hands of a goddess again because like that's that strength right there. Well, I'm glad you're here yeah. having this conversation with me because it's like, man, like you give it back to the community. Like, man, Milwaukee needs you. You yeah. hear me? They need so you. So I, I knew I wasn't going nowhere. Yeah. My pastor told me, you, you're not going nowhere. And I knew it. So I just had to take the steps. They told me don't go outside after I got out the hospital. I was making up a shopping list in the hospital. Like when I leave here, I'm going outside. <laughs> I'm outside. I'm outside. This is before they were saying I'm out. Go, we outside. Yeah, I'm I was outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. In case y'all just now tapping in, we were Shanika Jordan, a multiple serial entrepreneur. Uh, tell them where to find you at again. Like if my they need Facebook. whatever service, any yeah. type of service. <laughs> yeah. Um. So everything, all my business is on my personal page too. So you get the sneaker drawer, you are gonna get to everything. Um. Instagram, Big Boss Sneak. Yeah. Man, cancer survivor. <sighs> 
serial entrepreneur. So, uh, all right, we got lighting this up. So, like, what you do for fun? <laughs> yeah, like, what do you do. what do you do for fun? Like, cause you, um, you, you got outside a little bit. Yeah. We see you outside a little bit. Um, I ride my bike for the most part for fun. So that's how I kind of like relieve like stress if I'm like going through stuff or stuff heavy on my mind, stuff like that. I just get on my bike. Yeah. And what I kind just of bike ride. You got? A three wheeler, a yeah, riker. Yeah, what color? Lime green. Hold on, let's see that. That is the same color as that back yes, there. Same color. <laughs> same yes. color back there. Yeah. <laughs> you see the drip, man. The drip, like man, yeah, man, it's, man. Listen, man, you gotta work hard to get stuff like yeah. that, man. Yes, you definitely do. Yeah. So, um, um, what keep what keeps you going? Like what? Like you know, like because like you got to get up every day. You got all these businesses. Like what? Like what's the the drive like what makes you um my kids basically um and not going back to where i came from not letting my kids love do the I stuff love that i used to do mm -hmm. i don't want my kids picking up no sack I Sack. Wait, hold on. We gotta, we gotta. I gotta put the definition on the screen of what a sack is. Wait. A pack, a sack, a pack. A sack is no. <laughs> okay, let me let me choose my words. Like, <laughs> let me choose my words. Like, um, I don't want my kids growing up doing the things that I had to do. Yeah, as a kid. Yeah. Um, I didn't want them selling no drugs. I didn't want them going to jail, none of that. So mm. I'm like, what y'all want to do? Yeah. I got money behind it. What y'all mm. want to do? But y'all got to let me know what y'all going to do. I got to know you doing it for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and especially if if something happens to me, my kids need me. Yeah. Like I, I take care of my kids. So yeah. I got to. And you raising your kids for what it sounds like. You're yeah. not just letting them grow up. You yeah, no, I'm, I'm raising them. And they can call me right now and I'm going to do whatever they need to do. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Facts. I don't care how old they get. Facts. They ain't good. No, no. Facts. That's what God kept you here for. Like, nigga, you got work, dude. Nigga. I got work. Yeah, and I ain't finished. Facts, man. Yeah, man. In case y'all just now tapping in, we with Shanika Jordan, man. Like, this story is super motivational, man. And uh, I keep saying man, but it's the, it is super motivational. I hope y'all tapping in. Link up with her with her businesses. Um, your um your business page again. Um, well, my personal page is Shanika Jordan S H A N I C K E Jordan. Um, all my other pages attached to a classy hair, dimples, and smile, family daycare. Uh, Instagram is Big Boss Neat. You got to do something with the cancer awareness because that story is like yeah. super spiritual, motivational. Man, I don't know what to take with that because that's yeah. whew, you just run with that one because that's it. Make sure you include me though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do interviews. I can do sub outside. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I'm planning something. I did two um, cancer. Um, you got the cancer logo on your on your three wheeler yeah. and all that. Like, shop. Y'all be watching. Yeah, me, I, I represent because I had that. Yeah, facts. It's, it's gone now. It's but gone now. Yeah. It's right I on the front. It's an emblem on my car right yes. now. <laughs> yes, I beat that. Facts, facts, man. Facts, <laughs> yeah, facts. But other than that, that made me stronger. Beating cancer made me look at life different. Um, I don't take life for granted because it can go anytime, any reason, any way. So it made me look at it different. I basically, I, I do what I want to do more, actually. Yeah. I spend what I want to spend because you can't die with it. Uh, so, I needed this interview today. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yes. do what you, man, don't take life for granted. It's, it's something. Yeah, yeah, I ain't even gonna get into that, but like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah you we, definitely can't like yeah, you gotta live. Like, yeah. you never, you never know what your time when your time is, and that wasn't my time. So that that just showed me like live life, yeah. enjoy yourself every day. I enjoy myself every day. Like people are like you forty, sit down. I'm not do it like I finna sit down. Right. Do it like I'm forty. No. Right. Uh, you don't. I was gonna say yeah. you forty. Yes, I'm. I'm forty. Yes. Yes, and I damn they look. Listen, <laughs> look at those pictures, Shanika Jordan. <laughs> oh, man, listen, man, man, man listen. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I just, I just live life. Yeah, yeah. Well, your story just inspired the hell out of me. I definitely enjoyed this interview. Um, give, give some um, last minute shout outs. I know you got some shout outs. What you got coming down the pipeline? You said you got the community. Um, well, I got the back to school event August twentieth. Looking for any sponsors or anybody that want to join, want to donate, um, you can contact me at 
uh which one number it is 6010 sorry i got three phones uh 414-573-6010 um <laughs> if Flexed a little donate, bit. <laughs> <laughs> any supplies help sponsor um whatever um I'm a notary, like you said, I do bounce houses. Um, I got a transportation company as well. Um, so one stop shop, come out at me. Yes. And what else you got coming up? What, what, what else I got coming up? Follow me. Yeah, facts, Nigga facts, Jordan, facts. Cause I, I could think of something today and do it next week. Facts, so. facts, <laughs> facts, man. You already know what time it is, man. We kicking it with Shanika Jordan, man. Serial entrepreneur, cancer survivor, all the above, man. You chilling with Sir Quinn, man. We got that new website, best of the best TV.com, man. Shout out to my management, Mr. Dante Chestnut, man. Like, man, you already know what we got coming down the pipeline. You already know what time it is. Best of the best TV.com. Shh. Shut up and hustle. Yeah. yeah. You're rocking with Sir Quentin Best. Check it out now. Of the best entertainment. Shh. Shut up and hustle.